Can I still find a job? Asked the QA. Did the AI take all of the jobs yet? Aren't all QA engineers already laid off in the last couple of years? I get these questions every single day as majority of us have fears of being too late. And I'll be more than glad to give you a clear answer with the latest data from the QA market. But I will share it only with those amazing people who have signed up for our YouTube channel, hit the big fat thumb up button below, and also follow our Instagram and Telegram communities, where I share a lot more updates about a QA life. And our graduates who got job offers from companies like Tesla, Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft, and many others. Now, let me quickly introduce this smart guy before we get started. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I am a QE engineer, lead manager, and a senior engineering manager of SDAT in the past. I also run a company called Cognify, where I help people like you to become a QE engineer from scratch or to improve your existing skills. And now, let's get started. In order to find out if you can find a job, let's take a look at the current market situation. Right at this moment, we have more than 11,000 QA jobs on the market, per Indeed.com. And I didn't even look for an ASDAT for QA analyst and other titles. So that should be very first sign that there are a lot of jobs on the market, but let's dig a little bit deeper. There are jobs on Indeed that are not on LinkedIn. There are jobs on LinkedIn that are not on Indeed. And I've even had some students who found jobs on, can you guess, craigslist.com. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Which is not a very popular place for such a tech jobs, right? Although with dozens of thousands of jobs, there are many more applicants, you might say, right? And let me explain that. When you see 1,000 people applying for a job, only 100 of them will be qualified or will be able to talk about their experience. Or even more, a lot of them will not have a job authorization and will probably live abroad. Pretty much 900 are not a good candidate for this position. And out of those 100 that's left, only 50 will be able to answer basic HR questions, such as Tell me about yourself, what are your greatest strengths and weaknesses, and others. And out of those 50 people, only 5 to 10 will have the same cultural values and the personality needed. So here we go. Out of 1,000 people, only 5 to 10 will be a good fit for the company. Impact of an automation and AI on QA jobs. Let's talk about a QA fears. Majority of QA engineers fear that automation and AI will eliminate QA jobs completely. I mean manual QA. I had the same fear in 2013 when I just started as the manual QA engineer. My very first student in 2017 did have exactly same fear. And today you're having exactly same fear, but QA jobs still exist as you can see on the market. So you got it right. If you want to get into tech, it's not too late right now. And we even recently had groups that had 90% job hunting success rate within two months of graduation. Digits speak better than me, right? But you guys should also understand that I'm not selling a dream job or a course right here. There will be a day when 90% of entire world's jobs will be automated with code, robots or AI. But that day is still years away and the QA will not be something that will be automated very first, trust me. So get ready to change your life or just flow with everyone else if you are enjoying it. So what skills can you gain in order to still be competitive these days? First and very most popular of QA is automation. Right now, based on my research, there are approximately 75% of all the QA jobs on the market are QA automation or an ASDAT and 25 are manual testers. These digits go up and down, but job offers to our students, such as this one, that one, and that one, do speak better than anyone else, especially since majority of these job offers are automation or SDAT. And by the way, guys, if you want to find out how much do QA engineers or SDATs make, or in even managers, you can find it out on this video right here or right there. By the way, if you want to try what QA is without paying thousands of dollars and committing half a year of your life, we're going to do one week introduction course to QA in a couple of days. So if you guys are interested, I'm going to leave a link right below this video. I'll see you on the inside. How to stay competitive this year. The most important part of staying competitive on the market is constant learning. That's the exact reason why I became a QA lead 
manager and a senior engineering manager of SDET in the past in a very short period of time. And some of you might ask, but how can I become competitive against people who've been working for five years just after your 5.5 months of a bootcamp? Well, let me get it right. When I mentor people, I share experience I've gained throughout my dozens years in QA. Which means you will learn things that most people, even with the five years of experience, do not know yet. And this is not a rule, but more of an exception, but when some of our students go for an interview, sometimes they get rejected because they ask very deep questions other people don't know answer to, and they simply get afraid of losing their job because someone else with more skills is going to take it over. But regardless of the bootcamp, you can and should always visit conferences, sign up for tech newsletters, and watch new content on YouTube, just like this channel right here. So make sure to hit that big fat thumb up button below and subscribe to our channel and also to our Instagram and Telegram communities, where I share many more updates about a QA life and life of our graduates. Now, let's talk a bit about a soft skills that are actually the most important part of the interview. Because 80% of the interviewers decide if they are gonna vote for this or that person during the first five seconds of the conversation. As your answer to question, tell me about yourself, speaks not only about yourself, but about your communication skills, cultural values, social position in a team, and many other things. So how do you stay up to date with your soft skills? Well, there are only three ways as far as I remember. Number one, and my favorite, never say no to interview requests from LinkedIn, aka stay passively active on the market. Otherwise, you simply gonna get rusty. Number two, watch others going through interview sessions and simply learn from them. And honestly, I've got entire playlist, I think right here, where you can watch dozens of videos of people going through HR interview, technical interview, experience-based interview, and all of the other types of interview that you will ever need in order to get a job as the QA engineer. And a third one, which is a little bit more expensive, but in my opinion, it's the most effective one. Hire an HR who will interview you and give you feedback based on your answers. And you can also ask HR to review your resume because HRs do know a lot. And by the way, we do have an HR in our bootcamp who's taking a part of the 132 rounds of the interview preparation before students get graduated. Now, let's talk about a job search strategy this year. Everyone starts from the job boards, and there are no surprises. The most popular ones between our graduates are LinkedIn.com, Indeed.com, and Glassdoor.com. And there is also one which I really enjoyed, which is WellFounded.io, where I actually got my very first job offer in 2013 or 14 for $70,000. Woohoo! Aside of these job boards and others that you could research on your own, you guys can and honestly should expand your network. Approximately 10 to 20% of all of our students get the jobs from the referrals of our graduates. Simply people who are working in the same Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, etc., referring other students or whenever they're working as the managers or leads, just like this guy and that guy right there, whose video you can find on our YouTube channel, they're coming to me and saying, hey, who is the best student of yours right now? I need an intern or I need a mid-level QA engineer. And I simply refer the best ones. That's why 10 to 20% only of our students get jobs based on referrals. When I was working in the market, I did not have my bootcamp or I did not have anyone who could help me with that. So I've built my network with my within my first and a second jobs. And then I simply was in touch in a good relationships with all of the devs, designers, etc., even project managers and owners. And whenever their team was looking for a QA engineer, lead or a manager, guess who they would call first? This guy. But anyways, make sure to make friends in a tech field and they might get you a job one day. Now, let me show you what happened in the last couple of months to answer the question if you can still find a job these days. So this guy right here did find a job recently in Dallas, Texas as the junior manual key engineer, but he did have a coding challenge as they're planning to convert him into QA automation engineer. And by the way, right now he is creating his test automation framework during his first month of the job and he's a manual key engineer. Well, that happens. 
This guy from Georgia, if I'm not mistaken, got around $100,000 two months after the graduation. And as you can see right here, he's working on the three projects simultaneously. This girl, just a couple of weeks ago, also got a job offer for $100,000 as a remote QA automation engineer. And now she's moving to Midwest, to one of the most famous states with a lot of mountains, starting with the letter C, where she's going to be living closer to the mountains as she was dreaming about and moving from Florida. Just like many others from US, Canada, South America, entire North America, including Mexico, Europe, and even Australia. So in my opinion, guys, it is very simple. If you still think that you're not going to be able to find a QA job these days, well, you are correct. But if you think you could do it, just like all the other people who you can see on this YouTube channel, feel free to join our one-week introduction course into QA for a price of a couple of dinners. Instead of paying thousands without knowing if you're actually gonna like it and if you're gonna enjoy the course. Now, I'm going to leave a link right below this video for those who do wanna give it a shot. And for the rest of you guys, I wish you to take care of your family, of your loved ones, and most importantly, drink that water, get some workout, and take care of yourself. I'll see you next time.